Well, good afternoon. If you have your Bible, I want to go ahead and get right on in to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul was the one doing the writing here. He's filling us in about the place that we end up going if we're ready to go to be with the Lord. It says in verse 1, For we know, talking about the Christian now, we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, what he's saying is, if we know that our life is going to die in the flesh, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now, some people's going to go and say, well, that's just eternity in the heaven, in the heaven as far as the sky. No, I think that Paul is actually saying here, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands. Even though that Jesus has gone to prepare a place, I don't know that he necessarily is using his hands to prepare that place, but I believe that this a building of God made without hands, eternal in the heavens, means it's going to be there in the heavens. It's going to abide in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. You notice that it says there, for in this we groan. A groaning is not just making a sound, but a groaning is a deep meditation that you seek to see the Lord. You know, I have to ask myself, am I groaning as much as what Paul was saying here in this verse? You know, I'm looking forward to that time of going to the place of heaven. And I can actually understand where Paul was saying that we need to groan. But a lot of times the earth keeps us from groaning because the earth that we're, we're living in today supplies us a lot of joy and peace and happiness and contentment. And so, obviously, I think it's easy to say that Satan has robbed some of our groaning of being with the Lord. But that's what he's saying here, is that we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. The clothing is talking about the eternal in the heaven the things that we will receive in heaven. Now, in one place, it talks about being clothed, and then it also talks about being found naked. So let's read on. It says, If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Well, clothed is when you assume that salvation has taken place, and a garment of belief is wrapped around you, but a person that is found naked doesn't have the garment of salvation. I don't think this is talking about a natural nakedness. I think that there's people that's going to be found naked bef before God. And I'm not talking about the clothing. I'm talking about the clothing of the robe of salvation. They're not going to have the robe of salvation. So he says, If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. See, we're going to stand before the Lord one day. And no doubt, it could very well be that we could be found naked if we're not really careful. It says, for we, 
that are in this tabernacle do groan. Talking about the, the earthly groaning. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. What are you burdened for? It's talking about being burdened for people that are lost. Having a desire to really care about people that are actually lost and naked and without Christ. See, he's telling us here that he wants us to groan. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. See, the burden is also for the lost, but the burden is for us to desire that clothing of God, the garment of salvation. He's referring to here to the garment of salvation not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. It's talking about eternal life. It's talking about life with the Lord in heaven. See, you got to keep scripture in context. In verse number five, it says this, now he that wrought us for the self-same thing is God. So he's letting us know that, look, I'm looking at the naked and I'm looking at the clothes. And the one that's going to be clothed is the one that's going to be found in salvation. The one that's going to be found naked is the one that's going to not be clothed with salvation. It says here, now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, the deep things of the Spirit, the earnest of the Spirit. You notice that Spirit is capitalized. He wants us to have the earnest of the Spirit. Don't just settle for the Spirit, but have the earnest of the Spirit. The deep things of the Spirit is what he's referring to. But notice verse number six. Therefore, we are always confident. Now, this is talking about the saved now. He's not referring to the ones that are lost because they don't have the confidence Therefore, we are always confident, meaning our mind should never, ever doubt. Never, ever, ever doubt. We are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, talking about this earthly body that I'm using today, making this video. I'm talking about my body that if I reach out and I take my skin and I pinch my skin, then I'm going to hurt my skin. He's talking about that body. While we at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Now, it's not talking about being absent far as the Holy Spirit abiding in us. It's talking about that while we're living in this world, we are not in heaven yet. So he says here, while we are at home in the body, meaning living today, right now today, we are absent from the Lord. Talking about direct contact. See, I'm not in heaven yet. Even though I have a body even though I have a body that is meditating on the Lord, even though that I have this earnest of the Spirit, even though that I have that desire to be absent, he's saying here, we are absent from the Lord for right now. For the person right now, 
we are absent from the Lord. We're not, I'm not with the Lord in heaven right now. Is the Lord with me in this life? Yes. Is he with me as I read these scriptures? Yes, he is. But that doesn't put me into heaven. I'm not living in heaven. I'm not seeing the advantages of heaven yet. I'm still on the earthly side of life. I'm not living in that place that is beyond my comprehension right now. In verse 7, you notice that it's got parentheses around this one verse. For we walk by faith, not by sight. See, I don't see heaven. I believe heaven is there by faith. That's the reason I believe that the Lord, whenever they wrote the Bible and they decided to put the um, the marks in front and behind the sentence, uh, for we walk by faith. Faith is something that you can't see. Faith is the substance of thing, things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. That's what faith is. For we walk by faith. Faith is something that I can't see. I can't see heaven today. I can imagine heaven. For we walk by faith. Faith is something that you... Learn to use your faith eyes to be able to see the place that is called heaven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. A lot of people want to serve God if they can see him, if they can feel him, and they can touch him, and they can get blessings from him. Oh, they'll be jumped on board the bandwagon sure enough, but see... The Lord is not revealing himself today as he would when he comes back in the clouds of glory because he is going to reveal himself at that time in the clouds of glory. But notice what it says. It's it's set up in verse 6, we are always confident. Notice how he starts out in verse 8. We are confident, talking to the Christian now. He's not talking to the lost man. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. Now see, here lately, my mind has been on death. It's appointed unto man once to die. That's over in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, I believe it is. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. And what is he saying right here in verse 8? We are confident, I say. That's what Paul was actually saying here. We are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body, meaning the physical body, where my spirit lives in my physical body, and to be present with the Lord. Now, if the Bible says that we can, we can be confident and willing rather to be absent from the body, it only gives one conclusion. The only other conclusion that is left and to be present with the Lord. That's not meaning that your soul was going to go into the grave and sleep. Now, I've made a statement before, and I'll try to make it again. When my dear old daddy passed away in 2007, I watched him go to sleep and never wake up. 
I believe that his spirit man is with the Lord in heaven. And I also believe that there, the Bible speaks about a rapture. The Bible says that he's going to come back in the clouds of glory. He's going to come back and he's going to get the dead in Christ first. Then he's going to take up the ones that are alive and remain shall be called up together with them, the ones that was dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So this verse here says here, and to be present with the Lord. It doesn't give any other indication of where a person could be when he is absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There is no other conclusion. But here's what I believe. Now, if he, if my daddy has been with the Lord for all these 14 years, and the Lord decides to come and return to get the church, when my daddy comes back to get his glorified body, I just happen to believe that when my daddy gets back to that place of heaven, it's going to be totally different than he saw it before. That's just me. I don't have Bible to back that up. I feel like that the ones that... See, he's not in his glorified body today. His spirit is with God the Father. That's what the Bible says, is that our spirit can be with God the Father. That's what the Bible tells me up here in these verses. We are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. But when we succumb to the life, in verse number 8, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What I'm getting at right here, there's only two scenarios. You're with the Lord in this life, and if you're saved and you happen to die to the natural carnal life, you're automatically with the Lord when you take your last breath. It doesn't say that your soul goes into the ground. It does mention that your body goes into the ground, but your spirit man goes to be with God the Father. And that's what he's saying right here. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Does God want us to come in there naked? No, because the garment of salvation has to be put on down here in this life. Nobody's going to get salvation when you get to heaven. You either going to be fully clothed with the garment of salvation here in this life, or you're going to be found naked. And what is he saying right here? Wherefore we labor, talking about the Christian now, he's not talking about the lost man. Now this labor is not working for salvation. I'm laboring today, making a video that I hope maybe to be able to post in a few days. This is labor of me doing this video. I'm laboring right now. I'm not working my arms and I'm not out with a hammer and nails and I'm not doing labor where it's pouring sweat off my nose or my shirt is, is soaked with sweat. It says, wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. You know, you're going to be accepted if you have salvation. If you're found naked, you will not be accepted of him. If you're found naked. But if you are, like this verse here says, whether present or absent, meaning what that means is if 
if the Lord comes in my day and I don't experience death in the cemetery, he's going to come after my present body that I'm talking to you with now or absent, meaning that my body died. Either way, we may be accepted of him, meaning we are to be present with the Lord. Now, you know, some people doesn't believe that, but I happen to believe that that's what Paul was saying. He goes on in verse 10, he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Now, what does that mean? That means if a person knew that they should be a witness for the Lord and didn't, they're going to suffer loss. They're not going to suffer far as being told, I don't love you and hit the road, Jack. That's not what that verse is referring to. We all are going to be before the judgment seat of Christ, but if a person has been born again of the Spirit of God, they're going to be judged for rewards. The lost is not in this judgment right here. The saved is. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, Granted, there will be a time that he will call up the ones that are naked and the ones that didn't believe, and he's going to pass judgment. But the judgment that he's referring to right here is the judgment of reward. Could I get a reward for making this video? Could I get a reward for guiding someone with the scripture? Could God go and say amen to this message? Could he give me a reward for this message? See, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He's talking to the Christian. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. See, the bad things is going to be rewarded too. The good things that you do is going to be rewarded too. But what is the good things? It's not just talking about being an honest person. To me, the good thing is speaking up for the Lord. You got a lot of Christians today that they don't want to speak up for the Lord. I don't want to. I don't want to speak up for the Lord. That's the way a lot of people think. Well, if a person is that guilty that they don't want to speak up for the Lord, then they're going to be judged for the good and they're going to be judged for the bad. That's what it said right here. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. See, I'm out here today trying to persuade people to be clothed with salvation. That's part of my job, is to make sure that people understand that Jesus is coming back. Oh, yes, he is. He's coming back. He's going to come back and get the ones that is his child, his children from all over the world that believe in him, that know Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's going to come back and get them. He's going to take them to heaven. I just want you to be prepared. Be prepared today. Don't just take it as a grain of salt. Be prepared where you'll end up. That's what you need to do. Elderly ministry is how you contact me. If you need salvation and you need somebody to talk to, you need to get me on the phone today. You need to bring that phone. You need to leave me a message. 
you need to tell me you want to talk, leave me a phone number and a name, and I'll return your call. I don't have a problem in doing that. You can also reach me on YouTube. YouTube, you can also find a phone number on YouTube. Look me up. If I can do anything, I'll be glad to help you any way I can. I hope this helps what I brought out today. Thank y'all for watching.